here today again. This is Lisa Zan, and I'm with uh, I'm with Brian Aaron's, and Brian has a business in a uh, appraiser business, right? We don't get these a lot, you know. We're always buyers or sellers of real estate, and you know, I don't really kind of get in between. Um, so Brian has a company with um, appraisers, and that he's going to tell us a little bit more about running that property,、uh, running that particular business. Um, thank you for joining us, Brian, today. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's fun、awesome. to be on here. Awesome. So Brian and I knew each other from like kids' school. Yeah. So this is to say, like in every aspect of your life, if you're kind of curious, you're gonna meet different type of people. Like you know, strike a conversation, talk to them.、Um, so I'm gonna kind of go back a little bit, Brian.、Uh, you know, can you tell me a little bit about your upbringing? This is gonna. Go a little deeper. It's really my、uh, my journey to also explore, you know, people who I already know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I don't know how deep you want me to go here, but we'll keep it surface level.、Uh, I grew up in Bellevue, Washington, and、uh, my dad was a CFO of a development company. So I grew up in the real estate industry. I was always fascinated by the real estate industry.、Mm -hmm. uh, He also worked a lot of hours.、Uh, he worked,、uh, which should have been a nine to five job, but it was more like seven o'clock to seven o'clock、uh, during the week, and then he'd always go in on a Saturday morning.、Mm. So me being a young boy, I was I was always confused. Where is Dad always going? Why is his、mm. boss so mean, making him work all the time? And、uh, so I grew up always wanting to own my own company. I never wanted to work for a boss, and、uh, so I took those two influences from my childhood,、uh, thinking that you know I didn't want to work for a boss, and also my interest in real estate, and started my re residential real estate appraising company.、Hmm, awesome. So why appraiser? Like, how did this just kind of come about? Well, it's kind of a funny story, but. I graduated with a business degree, and after I graduated,、uh, this is after the dot com bust.、Um, had a tough time finding a job, and somebody suggested, "Well, why don't you become a loan officer and try doing that?"、Mm -hmm. And so I was a loan officer for a year, doing residential loans, and、uh, was successful. I I liked it. It was nice, but.、Um, Being on the phone all the time just wasn't my cup of tea, and、uh, I, but I also worked with appraisers all the time, and they had their own company. They all seemed really happy and independent, and I always, while working with them, was a little bit jealous of what they were doing, and、mm -hmm. so I became very interested in residential appraising, where I didn't even know what an appraiser was when I was growing up.、Huh. Very interesting, yeah, because it's kind of like a less heard of job, you know, like that type of thing.、Um, right. So let's kind of rewind back into your childhood a little bit, if、um, you have to kind of characterize it. So your dad was gone a lot, right?、Um, and that, so did you kind of get into like, did he bring into work or you know, kind of get into real estate? You kind of have an idea of what's going on, which kind of sparks your interest. Uh. A bit, yeah. We'd go to the office.、Uh, you know, my dad every morning would get his suit and tie on, and、mm. he,、uh, and he would come home. He'd talk about different projects they were working on, a lot、okay. of apartment developments,、mm -hmm. and、uh, would kind of go through the process of what they were doing. And you know, I, I have three other brothers, and I always was the one who was really interested and asked all the questions. <laughs> Like yeah, okay, Dad. <laughs> But、uh, yeah, so I was just. Were you the、me. youngest? Were you the youngest, or like, where, where are you at with like with your three?、Uh, there's five in the family. I'm number four of five. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. So,、um, and then your dad was a big developer. What was he doing, like,、uh, for the boss? Uh, CFO. Okay. So. Oh yeah. So financials. Yeah. Financials. Right. Just making gotcha, sure everything、gotcha. penciled out and what write-offs they could get away with and all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> I see, gotcha.、Um, so growing up, did you kind of go to college, etc.? If you kind of have to think back, 
like the early influences, obviously your dad, is there particular things or lesson or incident you can kind of think about that kind of give you really a really high impression or like a very um, long lasting impression where you're like, aside from obviously he's not there on the weekends and et cetera. Uh, it's a little interesting because you're choosing to get into the industry where he was, you know, robbing his family of time off. Right. right. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so like, is there like a moment or things that you think he particularly did intentionally or a story that you remember that kind of really shaped how you view like the not having the boss part, you know, like having to have your own company. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. There was one moment in particular where during the summers in college, I had to work. And one summer, my job was landscaping. Mm -hmm. And I was making a whole whopping $10 an hour. <laughs> and I knew through conversations with the other guys I was working with that the owner of the company was making $40 an hour. Wow. And so every day out in the hot sun, doing manual labor, you know, the owner of the company would show up in the morning. He would basically tell us where we were going, give us the addresses, and then just kind of give us a, all right, good luck, have fun. And he would drive off. And we would all gather our shovels and rakes and all the landscaping equipment and head on out to the houses and basically work hard every day. And one day in particular, this was on Mercer Island, uh, an old lady walked by and I was weeding or doing whatever. And at the time I was reading a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm, okay. And that one really struck a chord with me. I really enjoyed that book a lot. I think I read it three times in the matter of three days. I was just fascinated by that book and everything he was saying. It really resonated with me a lot. And so while, you know, I just finished the book and just so happens this old lady walks by and she says, excuse me, how much do you, how much do you guys charge? And I said, well, he'll charge you 30 bucks an hour, but I'll do it for 20 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. And she says, oh, okay, that works for me. Sure. When can you start? I said, how about tomorrow? So I started with her the next day, and in rather than making $10 an hour, I was making $20 an hour and working for myself. Nice. And so that was the first time where I really realized, okay, this probably is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And I wound up working for her the rest of the summer. She recommended me to her friends. I actually brought on a buddy of mine, mm -hmm. and I paid him 15 bucks and made five. You weren't like uh, the greedy boss. You actually. Well, yeah, I was trying not <laughs> yeah. to be, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was more than happy because he was making 10. Right. He was for the other guy. And I said, hey, you can make 15 bucks an hour working with me if you want. And we had a great time together. Yeah. That's I awesome. bought him lunch, you know, and I basically tried to make it as the best we could. But yeah. And that was the one moment where it clicked in my mind. I want to work for myself. I don't want to work for other people. That's awesome. That's awesome. So it's not so much of your parents up shaping. Maybe there's some to do with that, but it's like the whole concept of the rich dad, poor dad kind of really struck. Right. So what part of the rich dad, poor dad, like got you like so interested in that book that you read three times? What is the part that you read three times or you just read cover to cover three times? Uh, you know, we're talking about 20 years ago, yeah. <laughs> so it, I get to pinpoint exactly what it was. It's kind of hard, but I did read it cover to cover. Okay. And it was just from my childhood, like I explained, all, all the information, I was open mm -hmm. to it. I'll put it that way, mm -hmm. where I was really open to what he was saying. It made sense to me. Um, I mean, my dad was very successful. We had a great house. We went to private school. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of my dad and what a hard worker he was and everything he provided. Now that I'm an adult, a grown man, I've got a wife and two kids of my own. Mm -hmm. I realized how lucky and fortunate I was to have the dad that I did. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and there's being a business owner. I think you realize that you do have to wear all hats. 
mm -hmm. and you are constantly working and you can't, at least I couldn't take vacations. Yeah. And explaining that to my kiddos is sometimes difficult now, even where they want to play with dad and I want to play with them, but I just can't because there's mm -hmm. work to be done. And I've got a lot of guys counting on me. Yeah. But I also, you know, can make my own hours for the most part. And I, I start when I want to start and it's really paid off. It's just taken a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Now let's kind of fast forward a little bit. So you started this appraiser program. Did you kind of just jump in right away to be like, Hey, I want to do this appraiser program. So I'm going to set up like a company and start doing it. Or did you kind of like, like basically learn apprentice, from someone, right? Like a, to kind of get that started. Like how did you go about, you know, doing essentially a job transition? Yeah. Well, my transition was kind of an interesting one. It wasn't your standard transition where I was a loan officer for a year and I thought to myself, you know, do I want to be in the working world the rest of my life mm -hmm. starting now? Or do I want to go in the Peace Corps for a couple of years mm -hmm. and have an adventure and then get started? And so because I wasn't doing my true uh, calling, I didn't feel like at the time, I decided to go into Peace Corps for a couple of years. Uh, mm. And I brought a big appraising book with me and <laughs> studied while I was out in the jungle. And, uh, and what, then when What I is the Peace Corps? Sorry, can you explain a little bit about that, like, venture? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, Peace Corps is uh, an American uh, government-run organization uh, where volunteers join and then go to different areas in the world. And the idea is mm -hmm. you learn from their culture, they learn from you, and then you try to help them out as much as you can. Uh, if so you can. Usually it's like develop the areas, right? Like right. you have to yeah. go and do that. I was okay. in the South Pacific country called Vanuatu, uh, mm -hmm. right in the middle of the jungle, bamboo hut, no running water. Wow no electricity and uh yeah it was quite the adventure for sure that's awesome so yeah. do you feel like that kind of shaped you in terms of like hard working because all this small business owners know there's a period of their life they probably worked really hard right like hours is really not uh something that you can't uh <laughs> you just put in yeah i think yeah i think honestly i've got to credit my dad for my work ethic i i really did learn a lot from him and how hard of a worker he was mm -hmm. uh without being the workaholic yeah. <laughs> well. but uh at dealing with adversity is really what i took from peace corps that living in the middle of the jungle with no running water and no electricity and being surrounded by people you have nothing in common with mm -hmm. and they speak a different language and being away from my family and friends for two years, that was really difficult. Yeah. Uh, so really being able to handle adversity, knowing that everything's going to be okay, mm -hmm. not, you know, overly reacting to a situation, but, you know, being proactive. And mm -hmm. uh, you, it, I was able to read a lot of books, too. I mean, Oh, good. More rich dad, poor dad. You probably, like, had a whole... <laughs> both case yeah. of that yeah that's yeah, awesome so. yeah that's it's, it's sometimes good to unplug and just kind of think about what you want to do but i'm guessing you already know what you want to do like be an appraiser so you brought you prepared you brought over the the big book uh of appraising uh essentially over there yeah um yeah. okay so then you came back and uh you know how did you like started the, the company yeah well yeah, so being an appraiser, you have to be an apprentice for two years. Okay. And so you have to find somebody who's willing to train you. Mm. And it just so happens I was at a friend of a friend's house. Uh, I knew he was an appraiser, but I didn't feel comfortable saying anything to him. And uh, But I met him. I talked to him for a while. We hit it off. We were mm -hmm. talking like friends to each other. and. Yeah. Uh, and then I left and about a week later, he gave me a call and said, Hey, I know you are back from the Peace Corps. You're probably looking for a job. Do you know what an appraiser is? And yeah. so then I said, yeah, actually I do. And I told him my story and you know, it was 
he was kind of blown away that I did. And I even had this book that I brought into the Peace Corps. Yeah. And uh, so he asked if, you know, I wanted to come down for an interview. This is Portland, Oregon. Nice. And so uh, I drove down to Portland and I met with him. We had an interview and mm -hmm. a month later I started as an appraiser. Cool. Awesome. So he, so you then learned, you know, you have two years of, did you like, out of the two year apprentice right away you started your company or did that yeah. kind of like had a couple more cynic routes yeah right so i was an apprentice with him for a couple years uh i also worked for another company as well a uh, commercial real estate appraising company and uh once i was certified that's when i started my own company gotcha. which i started it in 2008 Mm -hmm. which a lot of people remember as not a great time to start a company. Right. Uh, but basically in the world of appraising, you get 50% on average of the fee split. Mm. So if the appraisal fee is 400, your fee is 200 okay. as a, as an employee. And so, <clears throat> so the other 200 most, goes to your boss. Right. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. And so at the time, uh, this is when the Dodd-Frank Act was enacted mm -hmm. and a lot of appraisers couldn't talk to loan officers anymore or right. brokers. Right. And all of a sudden there was this go between called an appraisal management company mm -hmm. who were taking a big chunk of the, of the piece of the pie. Right. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> appraisal fees, just for example, went from 400 down to, for the most part, 250 or $300. Right. And a lot of the men in the industry for years didn't want to work for that. And so they quit mm -hmm. or, you know, they just weren't happy with the fees they were getting where mm -hmm. from my standpoint, I went from basically getting 200, mm -hmm. but now I could get 250 and 300 a fee. So you started just yourself then. You didn't have any employee. You just like, I'm a self-independent contractor, self-employed, essentially. That's right. kind of how you started. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I started, that's how I started with the vision of eventually having uh, enough guys where kind of like the landscaping guy who could say, okay, guys, have fun. And then I could drive off yeah. to the beach, things like that. Nice. Well, you still have to like come back and uh, pick them up at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> that? Well, and that, you know, that dream is easier said than done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still working on that dream. There's, I'm not driving to the beach every day yet. So yeah. we're still working on that part. Yeah. But I, I mean, like, I do see that there's a flexibility in your schedule because uh, me and you run into a uh, kid's school all the time in the middle of the day. Um, be able to kind of pop in, uh, see where your kids are. That's, that's all very good, like flexibility. Plus, who are we kidding? If the kids are like in school, really, we have not a lot of flexibility anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's what I've realized is, you know, growing up, I, it's true. And, you know, it's nice the, with everything going on right now, uh, it really hasn't changed my life too much because mm -hmm. I do work out of my house but I also have a small little office. It's right around the corner from my kid's school, as you know. Yeah. And, uh, the flexibility there is really nice. I can walk down to the office or just stay in my house. And, yeah. you know, I, I get to have breakfast with my kiddos. I made them lunch today. Mm. Um, you know, I, they come down and say hi to dad while I'm working. Hey dad, what are you doing? I'm able to show them. And it, 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 it really is nice. I have no regrets and I, it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. That's awesome. Okay. So tell us a little bit about, we're going to change the gear a little bit. Tell us a little bit about like, so now you have a company, right? Like what is your first employee experience like? Like at what point did you hire <laughs> your first employee? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's been a process for sure. And, uh, a rough, and I wouldn't say a rough road, but it hasn't exactly been smooth. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot of things over the years. Yeah. Uh, but when I first started out, I was successful. I was doing really well. And I had so much work. I couldn't handle it all. 
And so a friend of a friend uh, knew an appraiser and he suggested him. So I brought him on. Mm -hmm. uh, he knew a guy, his office, who he worked with, who re he really respected and said he would be a great employee for the company. So I brought him on as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the next step was bringing on a trainee and mm -hmm. training that person just like I was trained. Uh, I got, mm -hmm. you know, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I was basically told all the time, why don't you clone yourself? I wish you could clone yourself. I wish right. there was more of you out there. And I thought, well, if they keep saying that to me, and that's why I'm getting all this work, why don't I do that? Right. And so I brought on trainees and initially I was looking for guys with experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they had already been trained by other people. Right. And it was really hard to retrain them and mm -hmm. get them to understand what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. So I changed my model on trainees to someone with a good head on their shoulders, uh, someone with a college degree and mm -hmm. someone I could basically take with no experience and train them mm -hmm. and basically try to clone myself. And do that's you, what I've Do you have process or docs like where you're like, what is it your process like? How you like kind of systemize that? Cause it sounds like, Hey, you have a very good idea how you do stuff. Um, I guess the first time when you do, uh, the, the first employee, there's probably no process in doc, but the, over the time, do you kind of like systemize that? And what does that kind of look like? Well, my system now, I've got seven uh, appraisers that work for me now. Mm -hmm. And my system basically now is I bring on a new trainee. I teach them everything about appraising. Uh, I, I basically kind of break it down like college does. Mm -hmm. So I, I have my employees learn basically the 101 information and then we move on to 201 and then we move on to 301 and so on. Okay. And so <clears throat> when I bring on somebody, I teach them the 101. Uh, I get them up and running. Um, and then uh, I've got another guy who basically takes them from there and starts teaching them a little bit further the 201 if you will mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then uh you know we move on to 301 which is theory based and uh then i've got my other appraisers who basically take that trainee mm -hmm. so after a few months they're that appraiser's trainee now okay and gotcha. so he gets mm -hmm. a commission for training him and then the trainee gets the commission like he would be for working mm. with me. Mm. Okay. And then I, and my schedule's freed up. Now I am ready to bring on the next trainee. Mm. Why is that first step is like you have to be involved? Well, you know, honestly, I started saying that and that's kind of true, but I have recently changed that. I okay. do have somebody else that it's because it's more like the data entry side of things. It's mm. really kind of the simple side of things, but yeah. um, I, I, I now have somebody who does the data entry side. Okay. Uh, and then I, I, I've found, this is all kind of relatively new, so I'm still working out the kinks, mm -hmm. but I have found that uh, when it gets to like, the theory side of mm -hmm. appraising, that's when I need to bring them back into the fold. I take over the training and that's when I start uh, you know, bringing up their level of knowledge. Gotcha. Gotcha. <clears throat> so that's like the, the master, master moment. <laughs> right. Yeah. Master, master. 